Let's talk about health care reform. Health care law went out, we can talk about. It, it's, it's seen as a huge victory for you, your presidency, for Democrats. Uh, it's a tough pill to swallow for Republicans. It's been described in a lot of different ways. Your, your vice president described it in colorful terms. <laughs> uh, how do you describe it? I think it is a critical first step uh, in making a health care system that works for all Americans. It's not going to be the only thing. We're still going to have adjustments that have to be made to further reduce costs. Now what we have is a system in place that preserves the employer-based system, but says, number one, insurance companies, they have to behave themselves. We're going to have a private system in insurance, but you can't uh, bar people from getting insurance because of pre-existing conditions. You can't drop people when they get sick and need coverage most. Uh, so you can't game the system. The second thing is we've set up uh, what's going to be called an exchange, but it's basically just a marketplace where individuals who right now have to go out on their own and buy insurance and have no leverage are suddenly going to be part of a, a pool of millions of people, including, by the way, members of Congress. And that gives them more buying power, the same way Walmart has more purchasing power when it buys from its suppliers. That will force insurance rates down for the vast majority of people. So what, what we now have is the, it, it, the basic principle that in a country as wealthy as ours, nobody should have to go without basic health care. My hope is that uh, this year we're going to see some very concrete benefits that people uh, get. Small businesses are going to get uh, billions of dollars in tax breaks to provide insurance to their employees. Parents are going to be able to put their children on their health insurance up to the age of 26. Uh, insurers are not going to be able to just drop people from coverage because they feel like it. This version of health care reform did not receive one Republican vote. Mm -hmm. You almost have to say that again yeah. to let it really sink in. Not one Republican vote. And a lot of people wonder how a bill or now a law could be good for the American public in general when it didn't receive one single Republican vote and when a recent poll said 50% of people aren't in favor of this plan. How do you respond to that? Well, look, I think that the Republican Party made a calculated decision, a political decision, that they would not support whatever we did. Right? I mean, there was a quote by a well-known uh, Republican senator who said, this is going to be Obama's Waterloo. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to what's, this, we're going to bring him down just the same way that we brought down Bill Clinton. Uh, by making sure that health care fails. And I think that's unfortunate because when you actually look at the bill itself, it incorporates all sorts of Republican ideas. I mean, a lot of commentators have said, you know, this is sort of similar to the bill that Mitt Romney, the Republican governor and now presidential candidate, passed in Massachusetts. A lot of the ideas in terms of the exchange, just being able to pool uh, and improve the purchasing power of individuals. Uh, in the insurance market. That originated from the Heritage Foundation. Uh, and so you so, think it's all politics? It's, it's well, not about the, the, the inner workings of the bill, it's all politics. I will say that, that any objective observer looking at this bill would say that this is a middle-of-the-road, centrist approach to providing coverage to people and making sure that we are also reducing costs. I am frustrated that Republicans who I think had an opportunity to help shape this bill declined that opportunity. That's not to say that on specific provisions there might be legitimate concerns that they had, philosophical concerns that they had. Some of them I think uh, sincerely believe that we should do more on uh, you know, this aspect of the bill or that aspect of the bill, but the overall architecture of it was actually something that uh, was, uh, was right down the middle. Daniel Henninger, who's the deputy editorial page editor of the Wall Street Journal, had an inter interesting take on it, Mr. President. He said, if you produce a bill that even Olympia Snow of Maine cannot vote for, you have not produced legislation for the generations. You've produced once-in-a-lifetime legislation that no Republican from any constituency across America can vote for. What's your response to that? And my response is, well, number one, the Wall Street the Journal editorial page generally isn't, isn't favorable to much, right. of, much of what I do. But uh, I think what's interesting is, is that if you actually break down the specifics of the bill, you will see that this historically has had a lot of Republican support. There historically was a lot of Republican support for the notion of an individual mandate, that everybody should take responsibility. There was historically a lot of 
uh, Republican support for the idea that we should uh, make sure that entitlement reform exists within Medicare. There was historically a lot of Republican support for the idea of the exchange, which is the centerpiece of the bill. So if you actually look at the particulars, these are all things that in the past, others, including the Wall Street Journal editorial page, have endorsed. And yet, What you keep coming oddly, back to is that the fix was in, is well, what you're basically I think, saying. I think what happened is, is that they made a calculation, which if you are thinking in terms of short-term politics, you, you can see the argument. Their, their attitude is, look, uh, if we stop this bill, if we paint it as president a, here, then, and we stop this president here, then that will uh, give us a lot of political benefit in, in November. What I've tried to say throughout is I will continually reach out to Republicans. I will continue to incorporate their ideas, even when they don't vote for the ideas that I've presented. Uh, but what I'm not going to be dissuaded from is us going ahead and taking on these big challenges that are critical in, term, in terms of uh, uh, America's long-term uh, economic health. When we announced that we would be sitting down with you here at the White House today, our inbox filled quickly with emails <laughs> from viewers all around the country. And Jeff in Minnesota asked a question I'd like your response to. He said, Mr. Obama, the CBO just issued a statement this past week that Social Security had reached the tipping point a full six years earlier than they originally had estimated. With that said, how can we believe their figures on your health care plan that says we'll save $138 billion over 10 years? The reason that the tipping point was reached a little bit earlier is because the recession was so devastating. Uh, and presumably if growth picks up, uh, then you'll see that adjustment made again. Now, Social Security generally has to be reformed to ensure long-term sustainability. But in any given year or any given period, it might uh, end up uh, being way off from estimates because of something like the financial crisis. Uh, here, here's the interesting thing, though. The Congressional Budget Office historically has actually underestimated the savings whenever Medicare has been reformed, whenever we've made uh, changes. And that was true uh, the last time it was done. So we actually feel pretty optimistic that not only is $138 billion going to be saved in the first 10 years, but more significantly, a trillion dollars is going to be saved in the second 10 years. Let's talk about where we are politically right now. And, and, and I don't have to tell you that this passage of this bill and, and, and turning it into law has left this country as politically divided as I think it has been in a long time. You might be able to cite some other examples, but the vitriol, the rhetoric, the, the, the sniping, the threats, how are you possibly going to continue with any kind of legislative agenda when your opponents have said to you, I'm not going to cooperate with this president, with these Democrats, unless it's a matter of national security? How do you move on? Well, first of all, I think that a lot of the rhetoric has been overheated and overblown. And uh, this is what happens in Washington when you have a big debate. Uh, suddenly, the passage of this bill is Armageddon. <laughs> And as I pointed out, the next day I, after I signed it, I looked around and uh, no asteroids had hit the planet <laughs> and uh, no cracks had appeared in the, in the Earth. Uh, this is a bill that is going to help a lot of people and help to lower costs of health care, but it's not a radical departure from what we've done in the past.